Hello, good morning. I'm Joanna Gosling, in for Victoria this week. Ahead, we'll bring you the latest breaking news, sport and weather. Do get in touch about the stories we're talking about today. Details on your screen right now and your input is really welcome. If you choose to text us, text will be charged at your standard network rate. And if you'd like to watch the programme online, wherever you are today, you can do that via the BBC News app or our website, bbc.co.uk forward slash Victoria. Now, Facebook is being criticised for refusing to remove a video which shows a crying baby being held by its arms and dunked in a bucket of water. It's been viewed hundreds of thousands of times and it's prompted an outcry from children's charities and many Facebook users themselves. We're not going to show you the video of the baby because it is very distressing to watch, but we can show you a still image from it. And if you don't want to see that, do look away now. She's the head of online child safety at the NSPCC. It is a very distressing video to watch, isn't it? Just describe what you felt when you saw it. Described as baby yoga, how would you see it? It's not deliberately intended to harm the baby. It's, but that is obviously no, I, I don't the, think that perception the, of it. I think the woman in the video, you know, action needs to be taken quicker to remove content. Facebook says it keeps things online uh, when they don't contravene their rules and they say this video doesn't contravene those rules because it de depicts uh, a form of baby yoga and they say that actually when things like that remain online it actually highlights an issue it gets people talking about something in the same sort of way the news does do you see any potential benefit arising as a result of images they're showing do you think it's different with social media, is, is there not, has there not been such a focus on social media? And Facebook do things like take down pictures of mums breastfeeding, causing the outcry that we're talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. And with what you're saying there though, I mean obviously you do indicate there is a, a very broad range of people who are on networks like Facebook with very differing sensibilities. It must be quite difficult. Well, you know, we have guidelines in the offline world. As Deb on Twitter says Facebook and Twitter are shocking at removing postings. The police agreed when I had to take the issue to them and Diane on tech says it's terrible. I've not watched it, but I think it's awful that Facebook don't take it off. Um, in the end, does it always come down to, to public pressure? Because obviously it must be very difficult for these big companies to actually get across everything that is on their websites until something is, is brought to their attention. And uh, stay in touch with us. Uh, 61124 is the number for your text. Victoria at bbc.co.uk, the way to get in touch via email. And you can also get in touch via Twitter. Now, a head teacher made famous by the TV show Educating Essex has warned of a ticking time bomb facing the profession, with colleagues suffering unsustainable levels of stress and not enough new teachers being trained. In an open letter to the Education Secretary Nicky Morgan, Vic Goddard said the pressures of the job often leave him feeling vulnerable and inadequate, despite the fact that he runs a successful school. He invited Nicky Morgan to visit his school, Passmore's Academy in Harlow, and yesterday she took him up on his offer. Well, we'll hear how it went in a minute, but first let's take a closer look at how teachers are feeling. Well, in a BBC survey of 3,500 teaching staff, 83% reported workplace stress. 67% said their job has adversely impacted their mental or physical health. 5% have been hospitalised and 2% said they had self-harmed. Well, we can talk now to Vic Goddard, who is principal at Passmore's Academy. Thank you for coming in. Oh, so you invited Nikki Morgan along. Uh, what was it that you wanted to get across to her? I think it was really about her duty of care to the profession and to the young people we serve, ultimately. I mean, those figures that you just said are, are shocking. Um, the government should love in teaching right now in that you're running an academy. That's what they want to see more of. I'm a bit noisy, I think, sometimes. <laughs> well, she came along to have a yes. chat with you. So taken under your wing, two, two local primary schools yeah. that weren't doing so well, palatable one. How did it go down? Because um, that's the extent of the difficulty in recruiting. Um, she said lots of things about that because you just described where your staff are coming from. Yeah. Um, what are the pressures on you as a head teacher when you come to finding new staff? Mass posts. Is she know. concerned about this? Uh, yeah, moment? of course she is. She she wants. She doesn't want her her tenure to be a failure. She wants schools to continue to improve. So I will employ all of those at the end of that year. But I'm not creating anybody for the job pool to carry out interviews because we are desperate to meet the needs of our children. And I read your letter and, and it's clear in it that you feel there is a need to constantly be improving to showing the results because you feel... ...those standards in line with what the government wants and surely that's for the benefit of everybody. 
But are you going to get them? Did you get anything um, more than get platitudes? Them? Th have yeah. been cut over time. And it's tough. A mandate, mandate has just been given to this government. Secretary, though, always has a tough job to... Indeed. Uh, a ch tough message to deliver. And, you know, we hear from teachers and have done over the years many times that it, it is a stressful job. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people might look at the world of teaching, though, and thinking, well, I think, well actually... They finish at 3.30 there. You're back below where you should be again. Arbitrary targets don't work. And then exactly when it tips over, as far as you're concerned, from being the sort of stress that you think is, is a correct part of the job. Even been released yet. We, we're selling something. We don't know what to do. We, we need to support young people. As, um, that she has, we, we asked her to come on the programme. Yeah. Um, she, she couldn't do that. But She's she, had enough of me after yesterday. <laughs> I ...with around 700 teachers and head teachers like you. So did she show the signs of being someone who is willing to listen? Yeah, definitely. The unions... So what haven't we reported that we should? Well, last the reason they both about the coasting schools article uh, 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 agenda, both talking about how important certain media outlets are to the government. Miss Tony Blair thing was education, it's education, yeah, education, absolutely. education. But when it comes to an election, it sort of always <laughs> ends up being about the economy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah and quite rightly so. Strained. And in, in terms of budgets in your schools, I think you say in the letter that you wanted her to tell you how you can keep improving standards. Pointers forcefully course, to her. And what uh, did yeah. she say? Is that um, something she'll look at? Uh, yes, it's Performance awesome. checks should be carried out on teachers. This would identify issues and make sure relevant support were given. And uh, D on Twitter says, I think some parents need to take more responsibility for raising their children. It's not a teacher's responsibility. Now to parents today to give help your, to give teachers your who love reading, one doesn't. Yeah. How do you get the ones that don't want to read? Actually? Reading. My son's a typical boy, okay? Give him a ball, he'll do that all day. There's any kid that won't read as long as you just find the right I thing think to if do. You, I know that in the long term... I had time with you yesterday, because I have this morning. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Vic. Thank you, Vic Goddard. And uh, later in the programme, we'll be talking to some classroom teachers, including some newly qualified ones, about their experiences. Also, coming up in the next few minutes, the High Court is set to rule. Next this morning, Hadrian's Wall has become a wall of sound today as part of the BBC's first ever Music Day celebrations with a 73-mile relay of hundreds of musicians travelling by bicycle, horse, bus, motorbike and even on a unicycle, passing a baton from performer to performer. Jane McGovern has been there since the crack of dawn this morning, hopefully with her dancing shoes on. We can't see, but... Uh... How's it going? Tell us what's been happening. I very rudely interrupted, but I was enjoying Anna's performance there, as I'm sure you were at home. Now, if you want to find out more about BBC Music Day events are happening where you are today, just have a look on the BBC website, bbc.co.uk forward slash music day, or as we were just hearing there on social media, using the hashtag BBC Music Day. Now, domestic violence charity says older victims of domestic violence, many of whom have endured decades of abuse, are often not getting the help they need. Eva Women's Aid has opened a safe house in Teesside specifically for women over 45, and it's also offering training to professionals to identify signs of abuse in older victims. In a moment, we'll speak to the head of the charity, but first, Graham Satchel has been speaking to Julie, which isn't her real name, who suffered domestic abuse in her late 40s. We can speak now to Rashinda Taylor, the chief executive of Viva Women's Aid, the charity that has set up the safe house. Um, hearing there, Rashinda, the story of Julie, how many women are there out there like her, older women who maybe haven't been getting the support that they need, who suddenly find themselves in a different situation and are suddenly being abused? These are women who in some cases have been living with it for a very long time but haven't until they come, managed to come to someone like you found the voice previously to actually speak up about it having been through, as you say, years and years of being treated in a particular way, what sort of a state are they in mentally? The sort of self-awareness, the self-confidence to look back and understand readily what it was that they went through and what they've left, or is there a sense that uh, maybe they find it quite difficult actually to pull away from it? get talked about more openly in the way that obviously you're doing today and you say that there have been other high-profile cases in the media presumably it, it encourages other women to actually see what's going on and actually stand up and say I'm, I'm not going to take this anymore there are places out there that can help me now, the government took an unlawful and unacceptably long time to pay new welfare benefits to two disabled people. The High Court has just ruled. Thousands of people have waiting, been waiting more than a year for their personal independence payments, or PIP, that's being rolled out in some parts of the UK to replace an old disability benefit. Well, in a moment, we can speak to Anne-Marie Irwin, the solicitor on behalf of the claimants. But first, we'll talk to Nikki Fox, our disability correspondent who's in Salford. Nikki, this ruling just through. Tell us more. 
because uh, we can bring in now Anne-Marie Irwin, who's a solicitor on behalf of the claimants. Um, this uh, ruling that we've just had in the past few moments, and I know that you've not had a chance to read the full ruling, lawful and unacceptably, an unlawful and unacceptably long time to pay uh, new welfare benefits out. If it is the sort of victory that you were hoping for, what would the implications of that be? Has it all been taking so long? Well, uh, the, when we argued before the court, then what the differences have been for those who receive these benefits when the system and the current system tended to be more rigorous to make sure that people are getting. Um, so is there a simple quick fix for things to be acted out on more quickly? I mean, it, you know, if, if, if it's the right broader thinking on that, um, is, is there a view that it is a fixable system? It's a system that could be made to work or would some people just like to see it scrapped completely? The correspondent, thank you, and also Anne-Marie Owen, solicit you for getting in touch uh, on the stories we've been talking about this morning. Let's just bring in a flavour of your comments on uh, the head teacher we were just talking to a little while ago. Tim Hall on Twitter says, kids who see teachers struggling with classroom discipline hardly want to become teachers. Uh, Mr Haynes on Twitter says, great words from Vic Goddard, especially when he said, fewer decisions by interested amateurs. Well said, he says. Bill on email says, what an excellent speaker this head teacher is. And Celia on email says, I completely agree with what your current interviewee has said. The Pearson Teaching Awards celebrate our amazing teachers and the things they do every day. And yet there is little, if no coverage of this. Also coming up on the programme, Harry Biker will stay with me for that. And uh, do keep getting in touch uh, on all of our stories this morning, 61124, the number for your texts. And you can also get in touch via Twitter. Now, though, let's talk about the weather because Matt has joined us. Good How morning. looking, Matt? Hi there. Hello. Friday at last. The weekend is almost yes. upon us. Uh, let me just... Uh, Take you back a few days. We were talking about uh, lightning, of course, on uh, Wednesday. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. The potential we'd see some lightning and thunder today. Well, yesterday, this was across central and southern parts of Europe. Each little cross on that is a lightning flash. We saw tens of thousands of lightning flashes across southern Europe yesterday. Some very warm wafting its way northwards towards the UK. These are the lightning flash. We also saw some pretty uh, large hailstones wow. as well. This, this was <laughs> taken by like Jan Bull in Tunbridge Wells. Big chunks of ice falling from the sky. Bit of a fright, I think, for some of you this morning, especially across uh, Kent. Now, some people have been asking whether these should be falling in the sky. Really? Because I, 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 to have them that big as well, it's pretty rare, isn't it? To get that big, you need to keep the droplets in the cloud, held up by strong winds, freezing, partially melting, freezing, partially melting. The longer they're up in the cloud, the bigger they become. And to keep them up there, because they get heavier, you need the winds blowing north up through the clouds to be that bit stronger, and you get them in the summer when the atmosphere is a little bit warm, a bit more energy about it. And that's what we had this morning. Thank you. And some of those thunderstorms still around at the moment. Let me just show you uh, where